Today we're talking rhythm and tempo in the wedge game. I have a 50 yard shot here and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to really hone in on our tempo. I believe that if you want to make solid contact and centered contact with your wedge play and have consistent spin and touching the ground in the right spot at the right time, tempo is a very vital thing to allow for all of those uh, elements to line up. So today, in order to measure our tempo, I have the blast motion. If you don't know about blast motion, it's a little disc that goes on the end of your grip. It measures, uh, it's one of the best things out there to measure your tempo and your Honestly, you should be purchasing this for the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. They are releasing a special for $75. It has great indoor practice capabilities. And when you get back to the course, it's gonna be awesome for you in tempo and also your putting. Like we talked about with your putter, it's a two to one ratio when it comes to timing. In your, in your putting, we talked about using a metronome. Here, I would like this just because it measures it a little bit more and we don't have to worry about the ticking and matching all those up. So, in this tempo, just to further discuss what we talked about in the putting, same thing with the wing, is gonna be about twice as long as the downswing. So, when we're measuring this, it is ideal that in our backswing, we're looking for about 0.6 seconds, and then in our downswing, we're looking into impact, we're looking for 0.3. That's a two to one ratio, that's gonna give our tempo right at two. So, in order to have a solid tempo, let, we have to first measure it and see where we're at. So let's hit this shot and see how I fall. So my backswing time was 0.61 seconds. That's pretty darn good. Within 0.01 seconds, I think I, I think I could do I could do some damage from there. Now my downswing time is 0.24 seconds. So I tend, personally, I tend to have a little bit too quick of a downswing. How do I fix that? What I need to do is feel a little bit more rotational. Allow my arms in transition to feel like they're kind of falling um, with gravity and, and using more of my chest rotation instead of pulling my hands down quicker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel like my downswing, I'm gonna keep the same backswing, try to keep it at that 0.6 seconds, but then my downswing is gonna just feel a little softer. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow me to have a better launching golf ball. Let's see if I can get this thing down to 0.3. And what's also awesome about the blast is it has that auditory feedback. I don't have to, I don't have to sit here and watch every single shot. I, it's giving me my time, if you can hear, hopefully you can hear that, but it's giving me my downswing time on these shots. So let's see if I can allow my arms to fall a little softer and use my body for rotation and try to keep my, uh, keep my arms more passive. Okay, so I got a little bit better. I'm almost to that point three. I'm at 2.26. Let's, let's see if I can knock another couple uh, thousandths of a second off. One more time. Point two eight. That's pretty darn good. Now, if you see, I my backswing kept around that point six seconds, and then my tempo ended up being uh, right in the range of what we're looking for. That two point zero range is what we're looking for. So, if we can, this is a great practice you could be doing, and you don't even really have to know where the ball is going. Just working on tempo is gonna make you a better player. It's gonna allow your lower body and upper body to be matching. If they're not matching, you're not gonna have a good tempo. A good thing you could be using is a little bit of a counter in your head. So what I like to say uh, is 1,001. So the backswing should be 1,000, and notice that's longer in syllables, right? And then you finish with a one. That's gonna make you kind of speed up that downswing a little bit, and that's gonna really help you find the right timing and tempo in your wedge play. So again, what I'm doing is I'm making sure I say that one before I hit the impact. Okay, that's gonna help me lock in my number 1001. So I got it exactly at the .30 on that. So if, you're, so if you're somebody who has that long and slow motion on the way back, 
it's gonna make that downswing pretty hard. I got 0.93 there as I'm coming down. That backswing is gonna feel really herky and jerky, right? But what you don't, so what you gotta first do is take care of the backswing. So let's get that backswing more in order of the 0.6. Now notice when I'm taking that backswing, length is gonna have a lot to do with this. The length of your backswing is gonna have a lot to do with this and the speed that you take it. So I'm just hitting a 50 yard shot here. I'm not trying to take this thing too much further back than my arm parallel here to the ground, right? So have, honing in that backswing timing, making it a little bit quicker for you is gonna help you sync it up on the downswing and it's gonna feel like a more fluid motion. Too many times I hear people say, I don't feel comfortable and it doesn't feel rhythmic. Well, that's because your timing's off. First, you gotta measure it, then we gotta go from there. So again, you might have to speed this up a little bit. And honestly, speed's not a bad thing because you know what speed produces? More spin. So if you want more spin, this could be something you need. this drill helps hit the like and subscribe button hope so my suggestion get yourself a blast motion it's only going to make you a better golfer and why not pay spend 75 dollars to improve your short game hopefully this uh, this video helps and you you're going to start unlocking some true potential out of your short game